to get to anywhere. Just like your favorite book, these songs take you on a trip in someone else's shoes. Bye, bye, Miss American Pie. Drove my Chevy to the levee, but the levee was dry. Welcome to WatchMojo.com. And today, we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 songs that tell a story. Put in a prison cell, but one time he could have been the champion of the world. For this list, we're looking at songs that lyrically tell a story from verse to verse. Songs with abstract concepts that are open to interpretation like Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven. But there was the night and we are And Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody won't be featured on this list. The same goes for theme songs, so our apologies to the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. I got in one little fight and my mom got scared and said, You're moving with your auntie and uncle in Bel Air. Well, my daddy left home when I was three and he didn't leave much to Ma and me, just this old guitar. Number 10, a boy named Sue, Johnny Cash. Now, I don't blame him because he run and hid, but the meanest thing that he ever did was before he left, he went and named me Sue. It's one thing to hate your old man for abandoning you, but to name a boy Sue before hitting the road? Can you imagine what the years of embarrassment would do to your self-esteem? An old guitar and a bottle of booze are only going to go so far. He was big and bent and gray and old, and I looked at him and my blood ran cold, and I said, My name is Sue! How do you do? A bitter and tough Sue vows to find the author of his misery and kill that poker-playing snake dead. When Sue finally encounters his father, all hell breaks loose. Cause I'm the son of a bitch that named you Sue. Even though revenge can be pretty satisfying, the man in black's great storytelling and barely controlled laughter makes the quest for vengeance bittersweet. And if I ever have a son, I think I'm gonna name him Bill or George, any damn thing but Sue. I still ain't and he was talking for a new it, and as he grew, he'd say, I'm gonna be like you, Dad. You know I'm gonna be. Number nine, Cats in the Cradle, Harry Chapin. And the cats in the cradle and a silver spoon. Little boy blue and the man on the moon. Don't be fooled by the whimsical tune. There's no happy ending here. Cats in the Cradle is a cautionary tale of what happens when a distant father figure is too busy to spend time with his son. He shook his head and he said with a smile, what I'd really like that is to borrow the car keys. See you later, can I have them please? The dynamic changes when the son gets older and is too preoccupied with his own life to catch up with his old man. Father learns too late that his son made good on his promise to be just like him. You see, my new job's a hassle and the kids have the flu, but it's your nice talk. Talking to you, Dad. It's been sure nice talking to you. It just goes to show that even if Dad sticks around and doesn't give his sons a girl's name, the relationship will fail if there's no emotional investment. When you're coming home, son, I don't know when we'll get together then, Dad. You know we'll have a good Number eight, the general, dispatch. He was a decorated gentleman with the heart of gold. I like him to all the stories he told. Inspired by Jimi Hendrix's Castles Made of Sand, this anti-war song is about a seasoned general who has an epiphany of the futility of war and encourages his men to abandon the fight. I have seen the others, and I have discovered that this fight is not worth fighting. Even though it's set in the American Civil War, the song's themes of the value and cost of life, especially lives that are too young to have fully lived, resonates today. The track's lyrical point of view from the side of the general rather than his troops makes the message even weightier. This song is a great listen to for not only its ideas, but also for that opening hook and funky rhythm. Oh, come on, Jersey! Number seven, Carolina drama, the Racon Tours. And like just about every other tale, something's gonna die in the end. This is not your typical retelling of a father-son relationship. In fact, we're not quite sure who the dad is in this Southern Gothic. The boyfriend with his gloves wrapped around an old priest trying to choke the man. 
Jack White croons about a boy named Billy that wakes up to a confrontation between his mom's abusive boyfriend and an older preacher. Billy challenges the boyfriend to a duel and ends up killing him with a glass milk bottle to the face. It was a cold glass bottle of milk that got delivered every morning at nine. Even though the lyrics are straightforward, there are some loose ends to this tale like why Billy's younger brother shows up at the end with a milkman's hat and a bottle of gin. Just then his little brother came in holding a milkman's hat, a bottle of gin and singing la 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 la. Number six, Hurricane, Bob Dylan. Pistol shots ring out in a fine moon night. It's a Betty Valentine from the floor of her. Similar to a film script, Hurricane is a protest of the real events surrounding the arrest of boxer Reuben Hurricane Carter, who was imprisoned for a triple homicide he didn't commit. I didn't do what he says, he throws up his hands. I was only robbing the register, I hope you understand. Dylan doesn't mince words and calls the trial and conviction racially motivated. The law wanting to find a scapegoat and find so-called justice even if that meant putting an innocent black man behind bars. Here's the story of the game. The man the authorities came to blame for something that he never done. The song has been revised over the years to avoid lawsuits from witnesses of the actual event, yet it still remains controversial. The success of the song garnered public support for Carter's defense and is still relevant to this day. To see him obviously afraid, couldn't help but make me feel ashamed. You live in a land where justice is a game. Number 5. Spanish Train, Chris DeBerg. What I'll give here in old Seville At dead of night the whistle blows and people hear She's running still This song's ominous tone draws you in right from the start And Krista Berg's skill as a storyteller captures the imagination A classic tale of good versus evil In this case, God and the devil gambling over the souls of the dead That are trapped in the afterlife express Joker is the name, poker is the game We'll play right here on this bed and then we'll bet for the biggest stakes yet, the souls of the dead! The song was banned at one point in South Africa, of all places, due to the line, but the Lord didn't see what the devil did. But the Lord didn't see what the devil did, and he said, that suits me fine. The idea that God might be flawed may have been too much for some people to handle, but it's a bigger idea than you get with most pop songs. And I said, Lord, oh Lord, don't let it the sun is down, the night is right and in. Number four, Piano Man, Billy Joel. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. A regular crowd shuffles in. You will never find a less humble, humble piano player. In Billy Joel's Piano Man, we learn about the lives and habits of bar regulars and staff. And it's quick with a joke, or to light up your smoke, but there's some place that he'd rather be. Everything from their hopes and dreams to their lonely existence and vices. It's a great song, and the Piano Man makes sure to tell us just how awesome he is in between talking about the sad lives of everyone else. Sing us a song, you're the Piano Man. Sing us a song tonight. It's an interesting analysis how being at a bar and being happy can be just an illusion and that everyone has a story underneath the facade. And the waitress is practicing politics as the businessmen slowly get stoned. Yes, they're sharing a drink they call loneliness, but it's better than drinking Number three, the devil went down to Georgia. Charlie Daniels Band. Well, now the devil went down to Georgia and he's looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind. He was willing to make a deal. This country classic sees the devil heading down to Georgia to steal himself a soul. Soon after, old Harry finds himself a young man named Johnny, who is not only playing a fiddle, but playing it hot. Boy, said, my name's Johnny, and it might be a sin, but I'm gonna take that bet you go with Greg, because I'm the best it's ever been. Johnny rising up your bullet, play your fiddle hard. Cause there's more peace in Georgia and the devil feels hard. Naturally, Beelzebub challenges him to a musical duel. 
as he's known to do, wagering a golden fiddle against the boy's soul. As the devil begins to play, a band of demons joins in, and it sounds suspiciously something like a 70s rock band. And in the band of demons join in, it sounds something like this. Our boy Johnny, however, is having none of that and shows the evil, evil idiot how it's done and earns himself a sweet, sweet golden fiddle. Johnny said, Devil, you just come on back here and we'll try again. And I told you once, you son of a gun, I'm the best it's ever been. I can still remember how that music used to make me. Number two, American Pie, Don McLean. And I knew if I had my chance. That I could make those people dance and maybe they'd be happy for a while. Don McLean's 1971 classic American Pie has been open to interpretation for many years. On the surface, the song directly references the deaths of musicians Buddy Holly, Richie Valens, and the Big Bopper in a plane crash that is now referred to as the day the music died. But I knew I was out of luck the day the music died. In 2015, McLean revealed that the message behind the song is one of morality, and how life has become less idyllic and isn't getting better, which is somehow an even bigger downer. When there we were all in one place, a generation lost in space. However you interpret it, American Pie is a story that will stick with you. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, singing this will be the day that I die. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number 1. Stan, Eminem featuring Dido. Dear Slim, I wrote you, but you still ain't calling. I left my cell, my pager, and my home phone at the bottom. Mixing Dido's thank you with Eminem's original verses, Stan tells the story of an increasingly obsessed fan of Eminem's alternate persona, Slim Shady. I got a room full of your posters and your pictures, man. I like this what you did with Rockets, too. That was bad. We hear the story from the first-person perspective of Stan as he writes a series of increasingly aggressive and angry letters to Slim. The narrative takes a really dark turn, showing how obsession and emulation can completely consume someone's life and impact the lives of those around them. Dear mister, I'm too good to call and write my fans. This will be the last package I ever send your ass. It's been six months and still no word. I don't deserve it. I know you got my last two letters. I wrote the addresses on them perfect. Not only was the song a huge hit, but Stan has also entered the cultural vocabulary as a term for overly obsessed fans. I'm glad I inspire you, but Stan, why are you so mad? Try to understand that I do want you as a fan. I just don't want you to do some crazy. So, do you agree with our list? What is your favorite episodic ballad? I remember when we were driving, driving in your car. For more musical tales published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. And in the car they found a safe, but it didn't say who it was to. Come to think about it, his name was, it was you.